Now see, to understand the economy of any country, it is necessary that we understand the demographic condition of that particular country because only then we are able to understand what is the state of economy. To begin with, the indicators of population, the birth and the death ratio which we had in the country and the life expectancy. These are all factors which help in understanding the demographic conditions of a country. Okay. Now, when we have the data about the demographic conditions, it helps us to access the quality of life in that particular country. Okay. Now, when it came to the colonial government, they were really not bothered about the state of demographic condition in the country as such. And other thing was they never made a sincere attempt to go ahead and estimate the GDP that is India's national income or estimate the per capita income. Now remember the colonial government were exploiters. So they would obviously be not interested in the development of the country. However, the first census which was done was way back in 1881 and after that every 10 years this particular census was done. So every 10 years we used to count the population after 1881. Remember that as there were no sincere effort made by the British government, there were certain notable estimators who tried estimating the population of India. So the prominent ones here were Dadabai Noroji, okay. Then we had William Digby, Finlay Sriyar and VK, RV Rao and RC Desai Rao, okay. So these were the people who made an attempt to estimate the national and the per capita income during the colonial period, okay. So the contribution made there by them has been considered to be significant, specifically of VK, RV Rao. Now when they estimated the demographic condition, they came to a conclusion that the life expectancy in India at that time was 32 years. So a person used to die by the time he reached the 32nd birthday, okay. Whereas if you see the current expectancy, that is life expectancy ratio, it is 66 years. The infant mortality was 218 per thousand. That is of the thousand children who were born, 218 used to die, okay. Now if you see this ratio now, it is only 63 per thousand. The literacy rate was very bad in India. We only had 16% literacy rate. Of that, the female literacy rate was even bad. We only had 7% of the female population who was literate. Now, when we do the census uh, from 1881, we came to a conclusion that before 1921, the population was in the first stage of demographic transition. Okay. And that is the reason we called 1921 as the year of great divide. Now what is the year of great divide? See from 1921, the population of India has seen a gradual increase and that is the reason we call this year as year of great divide. Okay. Now when it comes to public health facilities, there was no proper transport system, literacy rate was too low. Okay and other factors were also there because of that there were inadequate public health facilities. See the colonial government was not bothered about building health facilities for the people first. Now because there were not many doctors because of the literacy rate so we had shortage of the doctor, shortage of health care uh, facilities also. Apart from that there were no proper roads. So reaching to the poorest poor was almost impossible. So even if there was a doctor for him to reach or for any health facility which we had to reach to the poorest of poor it was almost next to impossible. And because of that we had a high mortality rate. So every thousand people, uh, children who were born 218 used to die. Okay. There was extensive poverty because there was constant food scarcity no employment okay, and continuous exploitation by the 
government now let's see what was the occupational structure at the time of independence what happened because of the colonial rule see the distribution of working people across different industries and sector there was no change in that so basically we were agrarian country and we remained so most of our population were engaged in agriculture sector but there was backwardness during the british rule now as i just told you 70 to 75% of the population worked in agriculture sector whereas 15 to 20% worked in the manufacturing and the service sector now we did saw some improvement and regional variation okay what was that the madras presidency which is now the current tamil nadu karnataka kerala and parts of andhra pradesh these were constituted under madras presidency and they did saw some industries being grown there so there were people who were shifting from agriculture to working into these industries the same happened with bombay and bengal okay so as people moved in that constituency or in that particular area from agriculture to industry they because of that they witness a decline in dependence on agriculture whereas however at the same time orissa rajasthan punjab they saw an increasing dependency on industrial sector so overall the picture or the of the occupational structure was 70 to 75% of the population was dependent on agriculture okay and the rest of the people were dependent on manufacturing or service sector after occupational structure let's see what was the condition of infrastructure see the britishers did develop a basic infrastructure okay but the main purpose of doing so was to ensure two things one thing to provide a easy way for transport of goods from the place of production to the ports so that from the ports using the suez canal they could send the goods to the to their country okay the second thing for developing the basic infrastructure was to ensure law and order that is so that they can keep the control in the country so for moment of army the basic infrastructure was developed by them okay now railways is considered to be a very important contribution by the britishers they were the people who developed railways in 1850 now the positive benefit of this was people started moving from one region to another now because of this movement from one region to another cultural barriers were dropped off okay people were able to overcome the cultural barriers and started traveling from one region to another but remember the main purpose of railways was to ensure bringing the goods to the port of shipment so that they can be shipped to british they did try developing inland trade and sea lane but not of much success for example they developed this orissa coast line to facilitate transport but then that particular coast line couldn't keep up with the railway it couldn't compete and hence the orissa canal was subsequently closed now they introduced this electric telegraph which was one way of transmitting message from one place to another in the country okay this was again necessary for them to ensure timely messages reach to other officers the british officers who were handling a particular state or region okay now remember electric telegraph as such was not much useful to people the common people because most of them were illiterate okay this was a expenses system which was being developed at the cost of exchequer but then it had benefits to the british rulers as such even when it came to inland trade the orissa canal i spoke to you it was developed at a very huge cost but then subsequently closed now the next was the postal services so apart from the electric telegraph which we had they also developed postal services with the same intention that the messages and the letters can reach okay to and the proper functioning of the government as such could be carried out 
by issue of orders issue of notices to various people okay so this were the functions which were being played by postal telegraph